Okay, what do you think of my backdrop for this video? It'll make sense here in a little bit. I was asked by one of the viewers, uh, do I ever splurge in retirement? Do I ever just spend money on things that don't make sense uh, or just uh, instant gratification? Uh, you know, the answer to that is really no, but I do spend a little more money on some things that give me value, give me joy past one month, two months. And I wanna talk a little bit about th uh, those things. But yes, I do rarely buy things for myself because I'll be honest, I just, I don't get a lot of joy uh, with stuff. I can go months, many months, three, four, five, six months without buying anything. I'm talking about not buying a shirt, not buying pants, not buying a new pair of shoes, not buying a new video game, not buying a new grill, not, you know, all those things. Um, I just don't do it. I enjoy learning. Um, I don't buy, buy many books. I use YouTube. I have a library card that I uh, download uh, books onto this uh, phone that I'm talking on. Uh, I didn't buy an expensive camera to do these videos on. I'm using my iPhone 13. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just don't get the value from things. And I think that is a critical step in maturity and towards retirement is not getting value for, from things. But I did list five here, okay? Um, first thing is shoes. This is a hookah brand shoe. I used to buy shoes that were like $40, $45. Asics was the brand name, I'll, I'll point them out. And they would last me three, four months before I would get a worn spot in the back end. These hookahs are $150 a pair but this one is 17 months old. I'm actually wearing one shoe right now. This is my other one in my hand. <laughs> but uh, I have flat feet. I need a great arch and great support. Look at that heel. I mean, that, that is pushing two inch heel, 17 months old. So actually I am paying three times as much for this shoe, but uh, I'm getting, you know, five times the life out of it, 17 months versus three months. You know, I'm getting five, pushing six times the life uh, out of those shoes. So I think it's a great value, but it is a little bit of splurge, something that I'm spending more money on. Number two is vacations, okay? Um, a typical year, and this is just after COVID, 2023, uh, my wife and I take four to five two-week vacations a year. We, find, we like two weeks. Three weeks is not bad, but four weeks kind of seems a little long. We like being home. We like our friends. We like our routine that, of things we do here at home. There's my cat somewhere around here, if you can hear him. He's a garage cat. Um, but we drive on those vacations. We, we, don't, uh, we take a lot of them, but we don't spend a lot of money on them. We stay in some nice Airbnbs, typically, some nice hotels. But, you know, we don't stay in a $500 night hotel. You know, like uh, we're going to um, Telluride, Colorado here shortly. And, you know, it's a, it's a couple hundred dollars a night right down there in, in Telluride. Um, but we do take a lot of travel vacations throughout the year. So, yeah, we, we, we don't live like paupers uh, <laughs> uh, on vacation. We have taken two really nice trips to Europe um, pre-COVID. Um, that's starting to open up uh, now, but uh, uh, es fully escorted, fully all-inclusive kind of travel vacations for a couple weeks. Those were nice. And we'll probably do one of those a year going forward. Probably not this year though. Uh, third thing, home. I, you know, we've always, my wife and I, when I say we, uh, we've always had decent homes, but we did a lot of work on them ourselves. For example, this house, where we raised our four kids, uh, we painted the house ourselves. That was a $30,000 cost saving to paint the house. It was a week of pain, but when we moved in, we had that $30,000 from in sweat equity. We also did everything with the lawn uh, ourselves, the, the um, you know, all the landscaping. And uh, I have a dry creek bed in my backyard, all those rocks and everything. So, you know, by the time we moved in, we probably had, you know, $50,000 worth of sweat equity into the home. And every home that we've had, we've always made money, quite a bit of money uh, in the 90s and early 2000s uh, on our homes. We have been in this one 17 years though. 
but it has been an appreciating, appreciating asset for us. Home, little nicer home, place I splurge, but it increases in value, not decrease. Okay, so there we go. Number four, education. Education is a place where I think it's okay to spend a little money. You gotta understand what you're gonna get out of that education, so it, it's an investment. So if you're going to school to be an engineer and your first year salary can be 80,000, 85,000, okay? It's okay to go to a school where a four-year education costs you, you know, 80, 85, 90, even $100,000 because there's a good return on that investment. Uh, you're gonna get a good job. You're going, you know, you can actually work through school, maybe borrow up to a one year. I, I, I buy into Dave Ramsey. It's okay to borrow um, up to your first year's salary uh, to get an education. Also with education, you know, if you go to a, a nice school, there's a network you set up. You make good friends uh, that you stay connected with through time can help you if you're looking to advance um, or just, you know, um, you know, seek guidance from those people. Uh, name recognition means a lot. My kids were engineers from Purdue University, and I'm telling you, when they interviewed for jobs, they didn't get asked any technical questions. They knew that they were great problem solvers and got a great education. They were just looking for what's this person's personality, personality like. I'm not sure why I'm stumbling over words today. Uh, maybe it's something to do with talking to yourself in the, in the garage. So education, I think, is a great place to invest uh, in yourself. I, I think it's good to spend a little money on that. Now, don't go to Stanford or Boston College or an Ivy League school, Harvard, and get a degree in elementary education. Don't get a $150,000 worth of student loans to get a $35,000 a year job. Don't do that. Okay, don't do that. One times your uh, first year salary is a, is a good rule of thumb. But there are times to spend on a good education, like getting an MBA. If you wanna get an MBA to advance your career, to go into management, uh, name recognition means a lot. Instead of getting an MBA from the University of Phoenix online, get an MBA from you know, the University of Michigan or Harvard. Yeah, that, that would pay for itself. Uh, my son, number three son, Spencer, got an MBA from Purdue and huge name recognition. And that cost of his, that education was blown away by what he's made in the last few years. So uh, good education is worth spending money on. The last thing, you know, and this may shock you a little bit, and this is the reason I'm out here in the garage, uh, the topic is cars, Okay. So if you look over here, this is my right. I have a 2012 um, Toyota Sienna, 195,000 miles on it. That's my car, okay? That's my car. We've had that for 11 years now. I drive 2,000 miles a year on it. Good chance I'll have this car another seven, eight, nine years, okay? So if we have it nine years, we ended up buying this car brand new and we'll keep it for 20 years. Good chance, good chance, who knows? Okay, now the car over here is a one-year-old Honda Odyssey. This is the car my wife drives most of the time, and when we travel, this is what we take. So most people will say, hey, it never makes sense to buy a new car, but it's not too bad of a decision if you're gonna keep it 20 years. This car, <laughs> in about another 12 years, will go over to that side of the garage and be my drive around town kind of car and we'll probably replace this one. So, you know, being an engineer, I like knowing the maintenance records, okay? I do the maintenance uh, on this car, not personally, but I do the oil changes, the tire rotations, um, don't drive it off road and, and those kind of things, but we really take care of our cars and, you know, good chance I'm gonna be keeping them 15 plus years. It's not a bad financial decision. Yes, you could say, boy, Joe, you should have bought this car with 60,000 miles on it, coming off lease. Maybe you've saved a little bit of money, but how is that car maintained during that time period? You know, okay, probably is a little bit of a splurge that we do, but 
It brings my wife great joy, gives us reliability. And I'm telling you, we drive these things for 15, 20 years. So it's not like I'm churning these cars every two years when the latest new technology comes out or the next shiny new paint coat comes out. So anyway, that's my story on five things that I splurge uh, with money on. Uh, and notice that this isn't a long list and it took me a few days to create this list. So uh, if you get value or if, you've, if you get joy, short-term joy from buying things, um, that's going to cost you a lot in retirement. And yeah, you may, you know, decide that's the right thing for your life. Great, great for you. But if you don't get joy from things, you could probably retire a few years earlier. I think that was fundamental to me retiring at 54 years old is that I didn't get um, short-term happiness, didn't excite me from buying things. Okay, did I miss anything that you splurge on? Let me know in the comments. It's Joel.